in 2003, South Korea was gripped by a new serial killer. It took nearly a year to apprehend him. By that time, he had claimed the lives of over 20 people and had also managed to escape from prison. Who is Yu Young Chul? What were the motives behind his many murders? And what happened in his life? A man who created a sick and twisted monster. Today, we will explore his morbid history and how he became the one of South Korea's most feared men. Join the Crime Chronicles as we delve into the story behind the headlines, seeking answers in the aftermath of a night that changed everything. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos we upload. Welcome to South Korea, also known as the land of the morning calm. We visited this country before, but it's worth noting again that South Korea is safe country, although not as much as Switzerland, Norway, or Japan. It ranks significantly higher in safety than many Western countries, including France and the USA. It's important to clarify that we're discussing South Korea here for obvious reasons. North Korea, its neighbor to the north, is the world's most isolated, secretive, and militarized country making it unlikely we'll hear any true crime stories from there soon. Turning our attention back to the more open and friendly South Korea, this nation enjoys a thriving economy surrounded by beautiful landscapes, mountains, rivers, plains, and rice paddies. And we can't overlook the Korean cuisine, a delicious mix of spicy and sweet flavors that appeals to tastes worldwide. I have a particular fondness for Korean barbecue, a wonderful social dining experience where you grill your own meat and vegetables and savor a variety of dishes and condiments at your leisure. Apart from the food, which I could discuss all day, let's explore Seoul, the vibrant capital of South Korea. Did you know that Seoul has an exciting specialty coffee scene? By 2023, the South Korean coffee market had reached new heights. September 24th, 2003, South Korea was jolted by one of the most gruesome crime stories the country had ever witnessed. Yu had escalated to more severe criminal activities. His victims were initially elderly individuals, particularly wealthy ones, whom he viewed as symbols of the societal elite that he resented. Yu blamed society's elites for his personal and financial struggles, believing his actions were a form of retribution. He lured these victims under the guise of offering to read gas meters or perform house repairs, then murdered them using hammers or other blunt instruments. Following several murders, Yu shifted his focus to female sex workers. His attacks on these women were characterized by extreme violence and hatred, and he often mutilated the bodies post-mortem. Yu's deep-seated misogyny was evident in his specific targeting of this group reflecting his resentment and bitterness towards women whom he felt had wronged him in his personal life. Capture and Confession Yu's capture in July 2004 was almost accidental. He was apprehended for an unrelated offense, but during the police investigation, evidence was uncovered, linking him to the multiple murders. Upon his arrest, Yu was quick to confess to his crimes, providing chilling details about his actions. He admitted to cannibalistic acts, claiming to have eaten the livers of some of his victims, which added a grotesque layer to his already gruesome crimes. Trial and Sentencing The trial was a high-profile event, drawing extensive media coverage and public scrutiny. In December 2004, Yu was sentenced to death, a verdict that sparked discussions on the use of the death penalty in South Korea. He is currently on death row, as South Korea has not executed any prisoners since 1997, despite continuing to issue death sentences. Impact on South Korean Society The Yu Young Chul case had a profound impact on South Korean society and exposed several flaws in the criminal justice system. It highlighted deficiencies in police procedures and the need for better coordination across different jurisdictions. The case also prompted a nationwide discussion on mental health issues, the social stigmatization of mental illness and the need for improved social safety nets, legacy and continued relevance. Use crimes continue to be a topic of intense interest and study within criminology and psychology fields. His case is often cited in discussions about the motivations behind serial killings and the psychological profiles typical of such criminals. 
it also remains a poignant reminder of the potential consequences of societal neglect and the importance of addressing mental health issues comprehensively. Conclusion Yu Yong Chul's legacy is a stark testament to the darkest capabilities of human nature and the societal failures that can contribute to such outcomes. His story serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of vigilance, the need for effective law enforcement strategies, and the critical role of societal support systems in preventing such tragedies. As South Korea continues to grapple with the implications of his case, the lessons learned continue to influence policies and public awareness around crime and mental health. That was all for today's video. You can share with us your views in the comment section, and if you are new to the channel, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos we upload. Thank you for watching the video. Best of luck and goodbye.